this video, we're going to give our opinion of whether or not taking a cruise on MSC is worth the risk of taking a trip on a line that you're not as familiar with. After all, you've likely heard so many bad things about MSC, as had we. But are they true across the board? Stick around and find out. And learn what we think MSC does better than any other cruise line. Would you please take a minute and subscribe to our channel? Each time we get a new subscriber, one of our kids breaks out into a dance. We were a little apprehensive about initially booking with MSC because we had read so many negative reviews regarding service, food, and entertainment. When it came time to book, MSC's pricing won out and we decided to give them a try for ourselves. After all, we're a big family and we have to save money wherever we can when we travel. The embarkation process was the most efficient we have experienced on any cruise line. We showed up right on time and we had only minutes to wait in a very quickly moving line. There was virtually no stopping. Our embarkation time was 11.30 a.m. and we were on the ship by 11.45. It was impressive, especially compared to our last experience on NCL earlier this year, where it was like herding cattle and NCL queues everyone up in a large hot room and brings groups onto the ship in phases. Initially upon embarking, the first thing that you're allowed to do is tie your credit card to your room card. There are cues for this after embarkation. This was really the slowest process that we encountered with a wait of about 15 minutes. NCL does this when they give you your room card, so this seemed a little convoluted to us, but once it was done, it was done. We sailed on the MSC Seaside, which originally launched in 2016. That's another factor we considered when booking MSC. We found that a lot of their ships are a great value for the price based on their age comparatively to the ships from other lines. Typically, the newer ships on other lines are going to cost significantly more, but we found that not to be as true on MSC. The prices are fairly stable across the board regardless of the age of their ships. This was a really big perk for us since we wanted a newer ship but didn't really want to pay the premium prices. The MSC Seaside was a beautiful and modern ship. Everywhere you turn, there is something interesting to look at. We found the ship to be exceptionally clean all of the time in both public and private spaces. One of the perks we found on MSC was how they give access to your rooms. In our experience on NCL, they open the rooms to everyone at the same time. They wait for all of the rooms to be ready and then they announce that you may enter. However, on MSC, they allow you to enter individually as soon as your room is ready. That worked out great for us because as soon as one of the three rooms in our party was ready, we were able to drop our luggage and head up to the buffet. We'll talk about those buffets in a minute, but right now, would you be so kind as to like this video if you have found anything of value? For this cruise, we initially booked three interior cabins, a cabin for myself and three kids, Chad and two kids, and a handicapped room for my parents. We booked the cheapest interior cabins we could find, but much to our surprise, we got a free balcony upgrade on all of our cabins. There were only two small downsides to this that I will share in a minute, but overall, we absolutely loved the balconies. I'm not sure we would spend the money on a balcony cabin in the future just because it is a huge price increase for us because there are so many of us, but we definitely enjoyed it. The only downsides were that since it was a free upgrade, we didn't get to choose the location of the rooms. That meant that our family of seven no longer had cabins side by side. Although we were on opposite sides of the ship, we ended up being on the same floor only a short walk from one another. However, with small children that we won't just let run the halls, it was a bit of an inconvenience. MSC upgraded my parents' handicap room to a balcony cabin as well. However, they chose to go back to a handicap cabin to accommodate my dad's mobility scooter. After sailing on NCL, our kids had fallen in love with the kids program. We had looked and looked for reviews on the MSC kids program, Do Re Mi Land, but just couldn't find it so we really didn't know what to expect. Here's the rundown. The program is very good. Our younger kids loved it. Our almost aged out 11 and a half year old, not so much. However, I will say that we sailed in the off season when there weren't a lot of other kids her age. For our six and nine year old though, if the kids area was open, that's where they wanted to be. 
Our six-year-old would often be the first one in her area and she was totally fine with being the only one in there. She just wanted to be there. They have a room for three to six-year-olds and seven to 11-year-olds. While none of the areas are very large rooms, they do have specific rooms for each age group. And they will often bring both groups together into a common room for games, planned activities, or movies. They had several fun theme nights, including superhero night, circus night, and pajama night. One thing that we found to be unique in our experience was that they are typically open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. during port days, and you can leave your kids on the ship while you go ashore. They will take them to the buffet and feed them lunch and dinner with their friends, which is fabulous if you have an excursion planned. There were two days our six-year-old chose to stay on, and one our nine-year-old did. On sea days, the hours are a little more unpredictable. However, for the most part, they would be open from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Occasionally, there would be an hour and a half where they would close down and they won't take them to lunch or dinner on sea days. However, they do plan fun, action-packed activities around the ship. This included things like dance parties in one of the lounges, a game show in the theater, and other parties. At first, I wasn't sure how safe the kids would be running around the ship but everywhere they took the kids, they would rope off the areas to keep them in and the other adults out. They have lots of staff to keep eyes on the kids and I truly felt like my kids were well cared for and safe the whole time. Just a quick note, while we didn't travel with any toddlers, they did have an adorable dedicated toddler play area where parents could take their little ones to play. It was basically a fenced in toddler sized playground at sea and looked like a lot of fun. One thing that I just want to touch on is the teens program. While we have two teenagers that sailed with us, they chose not to participate in any of the teen activities. While they did have some planned teen events, they were few and far between. The teen room was open, so they wanted to check it out a couple of times, and the staff in that room never greeted them or made them feel welcome, which was really odd. The only planned events for the teens in the evening wouldn't even start until 11.15 p.m. By that time, my kids were over it. A huge appeal to us, as well as many travelers, were the water slides. There was one inner tube slide for single or double riders, two body slides, and then a smaller slide for younger kids, although I went on it multiple times because it was so fun. You have to be seven or older to ride the bigger slide, so our six-year-old could only ride the smaller one, which was the brown one, in the kids' area. However, the slides were a huge hit with the rest of us. Unlike our last NCL ship, where it had terrible slide operating hours, they often wouldn't open until 2 and sometimes it would be later that day for unknown reasons. They opened the slides on MSC at 10 daily and ran them all day long. The kids' pool area was a huge hit with our kids. It was the only thing that our younger kids wanted to leave their kids' rooms to do and they were never ready to leave the pool area. Two of us checked out the zip line. It was a fair price at only $11. While we've done faster zip lines, we've never done one 20 floors above the ocean. Ocean K was our first stop in our itinerary and we spent two whole days at the MSC private island. We found this island to be the perfect pace and not too big to travel by foot. We swam at two of the many beaches on the island and spent one day snorkeling with gear we rented on the island at $40 a set for three hours. We've seen reports of jellyfish and small sharks in the swimming areas, and one of our kids claimed to have seen a jellyfish, but we never saw one ourselves. There are a few free umbrellas on the beach that are first come, first serve, or you can rent one. You can also rent a cabana for the day. Along with some quaint shops, ice cream, and bars, Ocean K has a large buffet in the center of the island with ample outdoor seating. The food was very good and mostly different from that served on the ship with a few special offerings for the island setting. Additionally, there are food trucks you can buy food from if you want something more quickly. There are several activities that you can do while in Ocean K, such as jet skis, kayaking, paddle boarding, snorkeling, you can climb the lighthouse, you'd better buy your passes early for this one, or just hang out and relax in the sun. In the evening, there is a light show at the lighthouse, as well as a party on the island, which we did not attend, but got to watch it from the safety of our balcony. Overall, we enjoyed both days we spent at Ocean K, and it was by far our favorite port stop on this trip.
We were very apprehensive about the food on the cruise because that seems to be a lot of people's biggest complaint about MSC. I will say there was not a lot of variety at breakfast. However, we always found something to eat and never left hungry. We found the quality of food in the dining room to be better, but we don't always like to take the time to sit down for a long breakfast. A family favorite at breakfast was always the chocolate croissants or the chocolate croissant twists. Aside from the days that we were on Ocean K and ate on the island, we ate every lunch in the buffet. There was some variety to lunch, however. They always had the same staples as well, including sandwiches, hot dogs, hamburgers, and of course their pizza, which was always a hit with us. Being an Italian cruise line, we heard that the pizza was wonderful and that definitely was our experience as well. They make all of their dough and breads fresh daily and they really are amazing. Our family was a huge fan of the french fries as well, many of which claimed to be the best fries ever. We ate dinner every night in the dining room and for the most part were extremely happy with our food. On a week-long cruise, I had heard you always have the option of a surf and turf night and we all got to enjoy steak and lobster on one of those nights. MSC did start charging $5 for additional dinner entrees if you choose to have more than one. However, you still get unlimited appetizers and desserts at no extra charge. There were only a couple of things that we ordered as a group that we didn't really enjoy that much. However, overall, we were very pleased with our food. Some of the highlights being the French onion soup, which is available every night, the steak and lobster, the prime rib, chicken parmesan, steak diane, and others. One night we ordered an upgraded lobster dinner. It was $20 and was a huge dinner, which included two perfectly cooked, nice sized lobster tails. Our nine-year-old, being a big steak fan, accidentally ordered the steak tartare, not realizing it is raw meat. He does not recommend it. Two thumbs down, according to him. He'll be forever known from this day forward as tartare. Subscribe to our channel to hear our secrets we've learned to travel cheap with a large family. I just have to mention briefly the soft serve ice cream on the ship because there has been a lot of talk and a lot of confusion about it online and I know everybody wants their daily ice cream fix when they are on a cruise. How else are we going to pack on that extra five pounds? They do have daily soft serve ice cream but it's almost like a well kept secret because it's tucked away in the buffet that isn't open every day for lunch. It's up on deck 16 and you have to go around to the far right side. It's definitely not obvious, and there was only one time that we ever saw a line, and that was the day that the buffet was open for lunch, and it wrapped around and did take forever that day. The hours we found it to be open were from 12 to 5 daily, and it is a very good soft serve and worth the extra walk to get this hidden gem. Over and over, we heard YouTubers talk about the entertainment being substandard on MSC cruises and how since the ship caters to Europeans, that most of the entertainment was not up to American standards. We found this to be absolutely false on our trip. We didn't fall in love with every single show, like the variety show on the first night, but every other night was outstanding. Our favorites were Moondance, a tribute to standards typically sung by Frank Sinatra and Michael Bublé. Peter Punk, which was a mix of Peter Pan, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Jurassic Park. And Star Walker, which was a tribute to the great Michael Jackson, a phenomenal show. These were all must see. One of the other great perks with MSC was their MSC for Me app. While we didn't utilize it for booking excursions or alternative dining options, you certainly could have. We used it primarily to book shows in the theater. This was a bit new for us, so here's the rundown on it for those of you with questions. Upon embarkation, we were immediately allowed to book the show on our app for ourselves and everyone else in our cabin. They only allow you to book a show 24 hours in advance. Typically, what we would do is see the 7.30 show and while waiting for it to begin, we would pull out our phones and book the next night's performance. We found this extremely useful. All of the popular shows did fill up on our trip and we saw people get turned away at the door and our ship wasn't sold out, so make sure to book ahead. Another tip is that you can also book these shows from the large screens placed all around the ship. A 
another one of the perks we found for MSE was their gratuity policy. For adults, their gratuities were lower than on other cruise lines, and for children, they were half price of that. I'm a little mixed on this because in my opinion, they give us and the children as much service as any other line. So I'm not sure they should be discounted. However, I appreciated the thought behind it. We did give additional gratuities to our dining staff because they definitely took good care of them and catered to them as much, if not more than us. So we felt like that should be appreciated. I had read that staff on MSC was not as friendly as other cruise lines and for the most part, we completely disagree with this. With a couple of exceptions, which I imagine you'll find across the board on any cruise line, the staff was exceptional, including all of our dining staff, our cabin steward, and pretty much everyone else we encountered. And finally, the moment you've been waiting for. What does MSC do better than any other cruise line? They offer unmatched value. Dollar for dollar, MSC offers more value than any other cruise line. MSC cruises are approximately 25% cheaper than the average cruise, yet the ships are glamorous, spacious and clean. The shows are plentiful and phenomenal, and the complimentary food is mostly on par with other cruise lines. For this large family, it would not make sense for us to go on any other cruise line. Thank you for hanging in there with us and don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Check out some of our other videos to see some epic trips we've taken overseas. Bon voyage!